June 4th, 2020. So I'm excited about the way my bag is doing over the last year, pretty much all through 2019. My portfolio focus has been to obtain as much BNT as I can and as much DAP tokens as I can. I've sort of been kind of splitting my spare income into those two tokens. And honestly, I mean, I got laid off in March, so I'm actually looking for another job right now. Hopefully I can get another job soon so that way I can start putting a little bit more spare income into crypto. but. I'm still extremely bullish on both of these tokens, even though they've already started a huge ascension. They've already given me back my gains. I believe I bought into the bottoms because I have been dollar cost averaging on both of these tokens. I've bought the bottoms of both of these tokens and I've pretty much doubled my money on both so far. Actually, probably more like tripled. So I'm still very positive. That's a positive thing. I'm still very positive on both of these tokens. And I think the bank, let me start with the Bancor Network. The Bancor Network is doing all the right things, in my opinion, when it comes to being the number one liquidity provider in the space. I don't think it is a zero sum game. I do think there will be other protocols for liquidity, but I think Bancor is really carving out a huge space and they really continue to be leaders inside the cryptocurrency space. What you have to understand is when Bancor first came out and they first created the first automated market maker, there was a lot of people who said it couldn't be done. There was a lot of people who were skeptical. There was a lot of people that said you couldn't trade with code and that the Bancor network was some sort of scam and it was only 50 lines of code. I think after three years of production, countless breakthroughs, I think they've finally broken that bad stereotype that they had simply for trying to go their own way and trying to innovate and trying to use this new technology, blockchain technology, smart contract technology to build something that hasn't been built before because that's where that's really what it's all about. You know, Bitcoin was never done before. Having a cryptocurrency that was immutable and and digitally scarce was something that's never been done before. And, and the free market praised it. And then came Ethereum and Ethereum came with the idea that you could have a Turing complete global proof of work blockchain that has something called smart contracts or advanced code running on top of a blockchain. And that was a completely new idea and the free market rewarded that. And it certainly took time in both cases. Bitcoin wasn't, Bitcoin wasn't built in a day. In fact, it was certainly didn't have much traction the first couple of years. It, in, in Ethereum was the same way. I remember when I first got into the crypto space, Ethereum really wasn't even, it hadn't even reached a billion dollar market cap. So I say all that to say that crypto projects and new ideas rather take time for people to really understand, number one, and sink their teeth into. So Bancor has been in the market for about three years now, and I'm really getting excited that I bought all the BNT because I really see where this ship is going and it's going in the right direction. It's an open source protocol that anybody can use. Anybody can create their own pool and then simply buy some BNT, connect it to the network, and then you have an internet of value, which is essential to Web 3.0. If we're gonna have thousands, millions of tokens running on these blockchains in Web 3.0, we have to have a solution that is robust for liquidity. And Bancor is going in all the right directions, in my opinion. They're open source, anybody can create a pool, and they're eliminating one of the main problems of decentralized liquidity, which is impermanent loss. If you're interested in, about that, I'll go ahead and link a article to Bancor version two and how they plan to use Chainlink oracles to do that. Now, DAP token, 
is part of the DAP network ecosystem. And I've been purchasing that as well. And I'm certainly excited on the direction they're going. They've managed to continue to add DSPs. They've managed to continue to add DAP network services. And they have people that run in incubators and accelerators building exclusively on the DAP network because they see the potential that the DAP network has in utilizing specifically EOS IO software, but really any blockchain that wants to go ahead and use it. So they see the, the power and potential of the DAP network. And like I said before, the DAP network is a protocol and they understand that the future is multi-chain, just like BNT or Bancor understands that the future is multi-chain and they're positioning themselves for a multi-chain future, which I think a lot of crypto projects early on really didn't plan for. So all of that first mover advantage that they had sort of goes out the window when you have the full picture. And the DAP network is making it easy for chains to swap tokens and data sets and also scale their dApps in many other different ways. You know, once developers get their hands on the tools that the DAP network provides, it's going to be a huge network effect that I don't think many people will see coming. This middleware service is going to be a huge thing and I think I think the next two buzzwords in my opinion are going to be liquidity network or automated market maker and middleware like these two projects Bancor and DAP network are going to do so well they're going to make that the new buzzwords that's going to be what everybody tries to imitate in the same way that everybody tries to imitate Ethereum success by creating these smart contract platforms when in reality we don't need, we need a lot of blockchains, we don't need a lot of different blockchain softwares. In the end, the free market will pick the few superior ones and the majority of these smart contract platforms will die off. One last thing I do wanna say is that the reason that I feel both of these teams have such a successful philosophy and vision in mind is because they're actually, you know, the developers of the DAP network actually worked on the Bancor project. For those of you guys who don't know, Bancor, yeah, Bancor had these guys, Tal and Benny on their team. And then once they realized the constraints of the Ethereum network for a problem called front running and other Ethereum blockchain, base level blockchain problems, they decided to move to EOS. And then once they moved to EOS, they figured they would become a block producer. So they created the liquid EOS block producer. And once they became block producers, they familiarized themselves with the EOS ecosystem. And from there, they started to realize some of the constraints that EOS had as well. It wasn't just Ethereum, EOS also had constraints. So then they built the DAP network to solve some of those constraints. So they've constantly been building, they've been taking real problems. They started off as just in, you know, enthusiasts and people who wanted to build for the space, who saw the future three years out, because in my opinion, these projects are building so that people can have real value today. So they saw where we are today, not where we were in 2017, and they have been relentlessly pursuing that vision. So now we're in a position where they, they, you had a group of people who had a real problem and continued to hammer away at all of the real problems that were preventing them from reaching that end goal. So that's why I ultimately believe in the leadership and the teamwork of the Bancor ecosystem, as well as the DAP network ecosystems. Keep in mind, they are two different teams, two separate ecosystems, but the CEOs and founders of both projects <clears throat> do know each other, are friends, and have worked together and believe in a lot of the same vision for the crypto space.